now in a process industry the meaning of aggressive environment is with respect to the material with respect to internal and external atmosphere environmental conditions the fluid which is passing through the pipes okay and the process conditions so with respect to all these factors we define it as an aggressive environment so metallurgical tests as we have discussed this these tests are required to uh, check the integrity of materials with respect to all the ASTM standards right we check the composition required what kind of corrosion may happen what kind of uh, defects are there all these factors we need to identify so this is the purpose of performing metallurgical tests now we have five categories here one is grain size testing second is intergranular corrosion test ferrite test then hydrogen induced cracking test sulfide stress corrosion cracking test so these are the five type of uh, testing which we perform to identify various kind of defects in various materials which are generally used in process industry so now we will discuss we will try to understand the basic fundamentals behind each and every test intergranular corrosion testing in process industry this is again one of the aggressive environments where we have requirement of such testing so in this section what we are going to cover is we will try to understand what is intergranular corrosion how we can avoid this kind of corrosion what are the various industry standards testing standards which are generally used to identify such type of corrosion then we'll just have a look at five various acid test which are really very popular to identify to perform these testings so let us start with the understanding the intergranular corrosion section now let us try to understand what is intergranular corrosion and why it happens and where it happens okay so mostly we see this kind of corrosion in stainless steels at the grain boundaries right why it happens uh, in it is result of chromium depletion right because uh, it happens mainly due to the precipitation of chromium carbides in the grain boundaries so let us look at uh, why it happens why these chromium carbides uh, precipitation is there especially in stainless steels if you look at uh, the chromium carbides can be precipitated if the stainless steel is sensitized in the temperature range of 550 to 850 degrees celsius okay so if you look at when this happens this may happen at the time of welding or it may happen at the time of heat treatment processes so stainless steel may see this temperature range even we are not asking uh, we are not designing for such high temperatures in the time of welding and heat treatment these temperatures may be there so at that time the chromium carbide formation may happen if the temperature lies in the critical range for too long okay if it if if this temperature range comes only for momentarily very a short period then it is okay it doesn't happen but if it is there for longer period then chromium carbides will start to form in the grain boundaries okay then which is susceptible to the intergranular corrosion the area adjacent to the grain boundary becomes depleted in chromium right the chromium reacts with carbon and forms carbides around this zone therefore becomes less resistance to intergranular corrosion so this is nothing but precipitation of chromium carbides at the grain boundaries when the stainless steel uh, goes through this kind of temperature range and this generally happens at the time of welding or heat treatment so this is how uh, this is uh, something about intergranular corrosion now when we are using stainless steel we know there may be chances of uh, intergranular corrosion at the grain boundaries so there must be some options some uh, ways of payouts to minimize the scenario so what are the various options how we can minimize uh, this intergranular corrosion first thing is we 
have found that materials where the carbon content is less than 0.05 normally have sufficient resistance okay why this scenario is there if you look at we have uh, extra low carbon content steels where we have uh, we have limited the carbon content up to 0.03 percent right we are talking about 0.05 where below that the material shows some resistance towards intergranular considering this factor we have a category of low carbon steel where we limit the carbon content up to this much that means we are not allowing the chromium to react with carbon to form chromium carbides if there is lesser carbon there are lesser chances of formation of chromium carbides at the grain boundaries right so this limiting the carbon is one of the uh, factors which can reduce which can minimize the intergranular corrosion another option which is uh, uh, really found good to minimize this intergranular corrosion is introducing the titanium or niobium elements the nature of these elements is like uh, if these elements are there in any of the stainless steels then instead of forming chromium carbides there will be formation of titanium carbides right which will not decrease the chromium content if carbon is high and there is a form there are chances of formation of chromium carbides then we introduce these two elements which will lead to the formation of titanium carbides instead of chromium carbides so the resistance towards corrosion will be high and resistance uh, uh, intergranular corrosion will be lesser right so this is how we can minimize the intergranular corrosion in stainless steels if we talk about ASTM standards and guidelines regarding intergranular corrosion testing we need to understand few things okay ASTM 262 is one of the ASTM standard which is globally recognized and used right for intergranular testing the methods are given in this standard so that we can quickly screen the batches of material to determine corrosion susceptibility right how we are doing this there are five unique tests which are defined in this uh, ASTM standard we need to select the correct method based on the understanding of the material and processes right as well as the concept of corrosion itself we need to understand the materials various processes the corrosion uh, itself so that we can decide which out of these five tests we need to select to perform the test right this test these tests are really very popular because uh, of its relatively short turnaround time to identify the to get the results right we can have uh, uh, the specimen inserted into the acids these five tests five methods have different uh, five acid tests we can choose one of those and we can insert the specimen into that particular acid and we can keep it there for particular time duration once we are done uh, with the insertion for a particular time period we can identify we can conclude of the test by measuring the weight loss or we can sometimes we can identify it visually also right so this is something which we which is defined in the ASTM 262 now let us look at uh, these five tests how and what acids are used what is the basic criteria this is a summary of uh, five tests which are given in ASTM 262 to identify the intergranular corrosion testing now these are the test types if you look at these are the five tests and these are the acids which are which we are using to perform these tests okay so each acid has its own uh, properties with respect to material based on experience we have to select which material which acid we have to combine so let us see what is happening here the first test which is oxalic acid test which is quickly screening the 
material that means we can quickly check whether it is acceptable or uh, we uh, ex we are expecting some kind of corrosion in it okay so this is applicable to corrosion associated with the chromium carbide precipitates right so this is one of the tests if you look at the second test that is ferric sulfate sulfuric acid test here what we are doing when we are inserting the specimen inside the uh, acid we have to keep it there for 24 to 120 hours and we have to evaluate the results the level of corrosion is determined by the mass loss right and we perform this type of test for stainless steel and nickel alloys okay so we know what is the test what is the acid and how long we are keeping the specimen inside it okay and how much is the weight loss and where we are using it now third test is for nitric acid solution where we are using nitric acid as a <coughs> acid in this test again we are keeping it uh, to 48 hours okay 5 48 hour intervals the specimen will be inserted inside it and it will be kept there for 48 hours then again 48 hours then again it will be repeated for 5 times this kind of test we are performing where chromium uh, depletions and corrosion in intermetallic phases right so this is where we are using it again we are having copper sulfate sulfuric acid test right where we are boiling the specimen for 15 hours okay we are using a mixture copper sulfate sulfuric acid this is a mixture and we are using it for 15 hours again we are using where this is applicable areas high in chromium carbide formations this is the application where we are having this type of test then the fifth one is copper sulfate test where we are keeping the specimen for 28 hours boiling test then application is stainless steel and low carbon steel so ASTM 262 defines these five tests where we are keeping the specimen for a particular time range and these are the applicable materials which are used for with respect to this, these respective uh, acids. So in this section we have covered uh, the intergranular corrosion testing. Try to understand the concept, what it is and how to avoid this type of corrosion. What are the various uh, ASTM standards and what are the various tests, acid tests available to identify the intergranular corrosion. So in this part where we were discussing the metallurgical tests for aggressive environments, we have covered the intergranular corrosion test. Hope you like the video. Uh, don't miss out the other sections which are available on the same channel. Thank you for watching.